Hey everyone, one question I get asked a lot is how to travel on a budget. If you're not sponsored by a brand, it can be really hard to come up with the money to travel as you'd want to, to where you want to. I've come up with some great tips and tricks to figure out how to do this, so I hope you'll stick around to find them out. Before we jump in, if you guys like adventure travel and want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe below and hit the little bell to get notified every time I post. And also I'll link my blog and Instagram below. So when you're planning a trip, there's three components that end up being the most expensive. You've got uh, lodging, flights, and food. So the first category is lodging. I would recommend as much as possible to stay at hostels instead of hotels, because hotels can cost you like 250 bucks a night, whereas you could spend that on an entire week at a hostel. So it really gives you flexibility with your money to use it for experiences and food and stuff that you really want to spend it on. Plus hostels can be a great way to be social and meet new people if you're traveling alone or in a small group. The site I use most for hostel booking is hostelworld.com and you can find the bed rates of all the different hostels there in whatever place in the world you're going to. And they have great reviews so you can see which one would be sketchy, which one would be actually really nice. If you're not comfortable staying in hostels, I totally get it. We've got other options for you here. One thing I like to use is Hotel Tonight. Uh, it's an app that I have on my phone, but I think there's also a web version. You can log in and find last minute hotel deals that are really good and they get cheaper and cheaper as the date approaches. Basically, hotels have empty rooms and they wanna book them last minute, so you uh, can take advantage of that through Hotel Tonight. If you're gonna use that app, be sure to use my code P-C-O-R-G-A-N, P Corgan and that's gonna get you a discount on your first booking. Of course, there's Airbnb as well, which is a great place to find cool apartments and unique spaces, sometimes cheaper than hotels. In Hawaii, for example, I was traveling there recently and I found that a lot of the Airbnbs were way more affordable than these fancy resorts and hotels. They were just all booked up, so be sure to book those early. The last site I'll recommend for accommodation is Hip Camp. It's a great place to find cool campsites and glamping if that's what you're into. And it's a different alternative that's always cheaper than hotels. Moving right on to flights, one of the most expensive parts of the trip, no doubt. The site I like to use is called skyscanner.com. And what it does is lets you look at a calendar and see which days the flight will be cheaper and it lets you match up those dates. So the key thing with this is having flexibility in your travel schedule. Not all of us have it, but uh, if you have to leave on a certain date and get back a certain date, it's gonna be really tough to get the best deals, but if you're flexible and you can look at the calendar and see maybe one day it's 100 bucks, the Friday it's 300 bucks, you're gonna to wanna to go the other one. Um, so you can save a ton of money that way. Skyscanner also matches different airlines together. So if you're flying Delta one way and it'd be cheaper to fly back with American or something like that, uh, it'll tell you that and give you those connected flights. You'll just have to book them separately. The last category I'll touch on is food. Uh, I find it's really tempting to go out to fancy restaurants and really try all the local cuisine. And that's great, but it does add up. So I'm not saying don't do that. I'm, I'm recommending that you go grocery shopping and cover some of the smaller meals so that you can enjoy really fully the special cuisine experiences that you're having. So for example, when I travel for breakfast, I'll usually do bars or oatmeal or something kind of simple with coffee. And then for lunches, I'll just do sandwiches. You can buy all this stuff at the grocery store really easily and make it on the go. And then for dinners, I'll go out to restaurants and local places, try all the local food trucks and all that stuff. Um, and it really saves a lot of money if you add it up. The last tip I have for food is that depending on where you're traveling to, it can be really useful to ask locals where they eat because a lot of the tourist places can be really built up and really expensive, whereas local spots can really be a great place to get authentic food, meet local people, and obviously save some money. So those are my main tips for saving money and traveling on a budget. If you have any more tips, please uh, post them below. I'd be very curious. And if you have any questions or comments, you know, again, comment below or uh, send it over to me on Instagram. For me, saving all this money means that I'm able to do more activities and have more awesome experiences wherever I travel to. For example, I was recently in Miami and I took a pilot lesson where I flew a plane over South Beach for the first time, which was incredible. And I couldn't have done that if I hadn't saved money through uh, these different ways that I just talked about. So if you're looking for experiences like that, be sure to check out Airbnb Experiences. It's their new kind of uh, program that they're launching and it lets you find these really cool, unique experiences wherever you're traveling to, to really get out of your comfort zone and try something new. And if you're saving money in the ways that we just listed, you'll be able to afford them. So thanks for watching everyone. I wanted to say a quick disclaimer about this. This is not sponsored in any way by any of these sites I mentioned. I just genuinely really like them and would recommend them to any of my friends. I hope you all found this useful and I'll see you guys next time for some more travel tips.